Liana, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sheila. Thank you for having me on. Pleasure. Now, you did a, you did a lot with others on, on the question of unaccompanied child refugees. Your thoughts on that decision yesterday by the Court of Appeal? Obviously very disappointed. Um, Citizens UK have very much been leading the way on, on that court case, which uh, we were very, very disappointed to see that the appeal from the Home Office um, had been ruled in favour of. It's simply making life more difficult for the 157 plus children who are unaccompanied in Calais, some as young as eight years old, who have family here in the UK and who should and who do have the legal right to be here. It's simply making that process more difficult. What it's meaning is that they are going to have to spend more time living, sleeping in the freezing cold, in the mud, often in tents, with barely enough food for a meal a day. We are just delaying that process. We are putting their lives in jeopardy every single day, every single night. Those children are going to try to reach their family. They're going to take their own lives into their own hands and try to get on lorries, on trains, and be forced into the arms of smugglers. And it's simply untenable that we have now ruled to make it more difficult for those children to come here and be reunited with their families. And what do you say to those people, Liana, who perhaps live in communities uh, that have been affected for years now by immigration, uh, either asylum Mm -hmm. seekers or or refugees or economic migrants, uh, but, but they just feel that they themselves, their community, has done enough, is under pressure? What do you say to them? Well, I think, of course, we always have to listen to people and understand you know, the issues that they have. And I wouldn't want to say that anyone doesn't have the right to the to feeling that they have also had some injustice within their own communities. But I think what's interesting, for example, of the report that came out today was that there are some, some myths that need to be debunked here. For example, of all the people who've arrived in Europe shores, only 3.1% of those people actually are applying for asylum in the UK. It's a really tiny proportion of people, the majority of whom, 55%, are women and children. And most of them coming to the UK, they want to join their family. They have immediate family here. They're not looking to be a burden on society. Many of them are educated. Many of them have vocations. They could be a huge asset to our society. They're not looking here to come for a hand And I think it's also really important to remember, when it comes to refugees, the majority of them are looking for safe haven for now. It's temporary. They want to go home. It just comes again and again every time they are asked this question. They want to go home as soon as it is safe to. So Britain needs to be offering those people a safe haven in the meantime and to reunite them with their families. And when this um, Home Affairs Select Committee report, this group of MPs, says it's unlikely that we'll meet that target, of 20,000 Syrians uh, from uh, mm. f- from camps by 2020, hot on the heels of the decision you've just j- just reacted to mm-hmm. as well. Do, do you believe that anything will be done about about the, the, this report f- from from the MPs? Do you believe that you know from f- from your dealings with MP- with MPs? Do you think there's an appetite to speed this up? Um, I think certainly recent political British um, goings on have made things more difficult. Um, the spotlight has been turned internally as opposed to externally outside of Britain. So I think our, our jobs and the lives of refugees will be made a little bit more different. But I think it's difficult. So, but it is important to note as well. Um, we do a lot of work with Citizens UK on a programme called Safe Passage, and I spoke to one of our friends there this morning, and he, he reinforced that there are 92 refugee welcome groups across the UK. There are dozens of councils who are willing right now to take in unaccompanied refugee children, and they are literally ringing up and saying, where are the children? So they are ready. There are also local authorities. There are foster parents out there. And we need to speed this process up. These are children as young as eight years old. This was British children living in a field in the mud, out of education, at huge risk of exploitation. We would be acting much faster. That's interesting you say that. So you believe, do you, Liana, that, that the the will is there, the welcome is there, the, the you know, the houses are there, the shelter is there from, from British people, but the organisational will isn't isn't matching that. Is that what you're saying? I think the process needs to be sped up. I think there is no one there in the camp apart from ourselves, Help Refugees and Citizens UK, currently finding these children, locating them and starting the legal process to reunite them with their families. And that's not OK. But these, these people have a legal right to be here. And yes, there are groups, there are councils who are ready, who are willing, who are asking where the children are. Now, I'm not saying that in any by any means that is... That is the same for every single local authority, for every council. But there are people ready and waiting. It is the process that is a problem and we need to speed that up. Liana, thank you. Liana Bird, broadcaster and co-founder of Help Refugees.